there are two different Copilot experiences coming to SharePoint. I'm going to cover why there are two, how they're different, and what it means for you. Let's get into it. So what are these two different experiences? So one is click to Copilot. We, we talked about that one last week. You can go watch that video uh, if you haven't seen it yet. The other one is Copilot for SharePoint. They sound uh, really similar, right? One's, you know, one's a Copilot for SharePoint. The other is, it's a Copilot for SharePoint. Here's the difference. There are different audiences, there are different functions, and there's different scales of the, the size, I, I would say, of these applications. So let's jump into the audiences first. Click to Copilot is going to be for end users. It, it will be for site owners to, to an extent, but really the, the main user of this is going to be the end user viewing a page. So Click to Copilot is going to be able to help them summarize pages, summarize documents, find information on that site. It's grounded on that site. So this is kind of similar to Copilot for M365, except it's going to be the, the scope is very narrow. It's not all of graph. It is just what's on that particular SharePoint site. It will be on all the different sites, but each Copilot will be for the specific site that it, it that it lives on. So there's kind of the audience. It's it's the end user and the view, the viewing experience on the page, not the editing. Now we go to Copilot for SharePoint. Now this is the one that was announced last year, uh, uh, late summer, early fall, something like that. Uh, last year, maybe at Ignite. I think it was Ignite. So Copilot for SharePoint is targeting the page editors and the content creators in SharePoint. Now, it may not necessarily be all contained on one site. It also it looks to me like it's gonna live in the SharePoint start page as well. So if you're on the start page, you'll be able to use Copilot to start to create content for SharePoint. And you'll be able to deploy this to the, the site that you want it to go to, but you can also go straight to the SharePoint site. And what you're gonna get there is you'll be able to start customizing your pages, creating and editing pages and using Copilot to help out with that. The Copilot for SharePoint is targeting page editors, content creators. Click to Copilot is targeting the viewers of that site. So between the two of those groups, everyone who goes to a SharePoint site will have a Copilot that is designed for them. I hope that clears up that confusion. Now let's go into the functionality. The functionality is going to be vastly different because again, you have different audiences. For viewers, the click to Copilot experience is all about finding and summarizing data. It's about answering questions about information on that site. Now that, that could be something like finding uh, information on a policy on the HR site without having to go dig through the document library or click around the navigation to stumble into the policies and procedures library. So it will it will know where all that information is. You can just simply ask it questions and it will answer. So it's all about finding, summarizing, analyzing information on a particular SharePoint site. Now that could be all of the site, there could be a different copilot, uh, a custom copilot that's created using Click to Copilot that's just for a document library or even a few files on there. But that's in essence what Click to Copilot is there for. It's there for the end users like you and me visiting someone else's site, and it's to find that information. Now, let's jump over to Copilot for SharePoint. This is the older. Uh, the older functionality, the older announcement, because Click to Copilot just came out a couple of weeks ago. Copilot for SharePoint is gonna be the page editor, the page creation experience. And you're gonna be able to go into a page and edit that. And you'll be able to talk to Copilot and have Copilot assist you with creating the content on that page, creating the layout, changing things around. If you're like me and have no artistic ability whatsoever, uh, that's definitely me. You can ask it to maybe grab a PowerPoint file, maybe grab a Word document, maybe another file somewhere, and create content for this particular page. You can have it add in some imagery to it, add in stock imagery, something like that, so that it looks visually appealing, so it has a good artistic style to it. That's going to be crucial for me, certainly. 
you'll be able to use that to uh, so so Copilot will have more uh, actions you could say to create content on your behalf or work with you to create that content. So that's going to be really important for people setting up pages who may not be that familiar or comfortable with uh, dra dragging and dropping or even what the various web parts are, are that are available on SharePoint page uh, editors. So I think that's going to be really good to lower the bar, lower that or lessen that learning curve for creating content with SharePoint, whether you don't have the technical chops just yet, you're, you're brand new to page editing in SharePoint, or you, like me, don't have any technical or, excuse me, don't have any artistic ability uh, and need, need something that looks good. Like you could handle the technical part, but you, you need something. You need some help there without bugging a coworker who might be busy in something else to get their opinion on that. So uh, Copilot for your SharePoint is going to be able to give you a lot of different ideas and, and kind of work with you to make that content look good and make it, um, make it complete on that page. There'll also be an updated SharePoint start page so that you can start creating content, including SharePoint sites themselves. You can create a brand new site, of course, assuming you have the permission, but you'll be able to create sites uh, using Copilot for SharePoint using this new start page. Now let's talk about the timelines for this because they have vastly different timelines. Um, let's start with the good news first. Actually, Copilot for SharePoint is is deploying. Uh, it has started to roll out in May of this year, so it is it is already headed your way. You should be getting that updated start page anytime now. Uh, you should be getting an updated page editing experience with the Copilot built into it. That that should be. It's already starting to roll out in a preview. Uh, and a preview capacity, a preview period. So there's the good news. Now, click to Copilot, on the other hand, it, it was just announced. Uh, they're just starting to show this thing off for the first time publicly. Uh, we're probably not going to see this until later this year. So we have a bit of a wait. I'm hoping it doesn't get delayed. I'm hoping there's not any issues. It really looks fun. It looks looks really big. So we're going to have to wait until later this year, and maybe we'll get early access during a preview uh, for that particular product. I'm hoping so. A lot of times they do have these preview periods. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for that one. Now, the last one, that last big difference I wanted to touch on is kind of the, the, the scale of these products, the size of the products. Click to Copilot is a big big deal. It's a very big product. It is, you're going to be able to, with a few clicks, create a custom copilot. At some point quickly, sites will have multiple copilots to choose from. And users can choose which one they want. You can take it one step further and start to customize that copilot in Copilot Studio, adding an advanced functionality. There's a lot to this one a lot and, and most of it is going to lie in the extensibility uh, uh, arena of this now copilot for sharepoint on the other hand the older feature it is a much more narrowly scoped thing it is specifically targeting the uh, uh, content creation and, and and that's that's really it. Uh, you're going to have it in the the, ed the page editor. You're going to have it in the SharePoint start page, and that's it. You're, there's really not any extensibility that we have heard about. The, it's going to be a, a much smaller product, but it's not going to be without a big impact. I think it'll have just as much of an impact. Uh, is click to copilot. But again, it's a different audience. It's going to have a major impact for content creators versus click to copilot, where it's going to have a big impact for end users, power users, and I would say developers who are really uh, itching to dive into copilot studio. So a lot of possibilities with click to copilot. Uh, Copilot to SharePoint, we, we already know what we're kind of getting there. I'm sure they'll add more features as they as the year goes on and as the years go on. So we're gonna, we'll get more with that. But Copilot, um, the click to Copilot, we're just scratching the surface of what we can what we can do with this just because the news is brand new.
I'm sure they'll announce additional things coming to click to copilot. Uh, I mentioned in the last video, it's coming to Viva connections. It's coming to SharePoint embedded. Uh, that's, it's going to have a big scope there. Uh, it is not just SharePoint. Uh, even, even though it, it, you know, most of what we've talked about in this video has been the impact on SharePoint, but there will be other ones. Uh, if you want to see how that one works and in a lot more detail, then click into this video to uh, to just review what, what Click to Copilot really even is, uh, what it's used for, uh, all the different functions. I broke everything down for you. So check out that video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you love this content, and I'll see you on the next one.